Donald Trump actually said something um, true uh, this morning, which was it's an unprecedented, nothing like this has ever happened before. It's a historic day where a former president gets put on criminal trial. So uh, at the same time, he does have a case. A lot of people think that this hush money case uh, to do with um, silencing allegations of a relationship with Stormy Daniels, the porn star, uh, on the eve of the 2016 election, is an unusual case to be brought. And uh, his supporters would say, well, if Donald Trump didn't have people out to get him, he wouldn't be in court today. And there's some merit in that. Mm. I, I know we've spoken before about this, uh, Sarah. I mean, this is a, a criminal case in, in theory, in law. Someone convicted of these offences faces maybe, well, maybe years in, in prison. But you don't believe, do you, that that's going to happen? Well, no, I very much doubt that they're going to put a former president in jail. That's just, it's just not realistic. Worst case scenario, he gets convicted, has to serve some sort of time. Don't forget, he has secret service protection. Um, so uh, there's some speculation that he could be, you know, kind of under house arrest, so to speak, in Mar-a-Lago. It's not going to happen. Donald Trump's going to appeal a verdict if it is a guilty one, which, you know, we're not there yet. They're still trying to select a jury today. And... Um, uh, th th there's there's so many hurdles to to jump through mm. uh, that um, I I'd be very surprised if this results in in jail, but it could result in a guilty verdict against Donald Trump because there's a lot of documentary evidence to the effect that he did use um, uh, business money to uh, pay off Stormy Daniels using an intermediary, Michael Cohen, whose testimony is going to come under severe scrutiny. Cohen used to be a lieutenant for Trump. He's now turned to the other side. But Cohen has served jail time himself for this. So uh, Donald Trump's going to have a hard time avoiding a guilty verdict mm. as long as uh, a fair jury is selected. And of course, it's very difficult to get anybody in New York who doesn't have a firm opinion about Donald Trump one way or the other. Yeah, we don't take a couple of Republicans on the jury and there goes a, a clear, clear verdict. Now, look, I think only one person has to say no. Yeah. They think he's innocent. And there are murky aspects to this case which Donald Trump's lawyers will be able to exploit. Right. Now, look, on the polling, even if he doesn't go to jail, if he's convicted, there is evidence that says that that would put off a significant body of American voters, isn't there, including, including in, among Republicans? Yes, there is. And uh, we only have to look at the fact that people, Republican voters in the primaries were still choosing Nikki Haley as their potential stop Trump candidate, up to 20 percent of them in primaries after she had stopped running to suggest there's some resistance in the um, among traditional Republicans to voting for Trump. But of course, he has enormous popular support amongst people who traditionally don't even vote at all. So, uh, you know, it's all six of the dozen of one and half, you know, and the other. So um, we'll have to see how this plays out. In the past, um, these prosecutions have helped Trump to bounce back and engender sympathy for him. But an actual criminal conviction is a different matter. Right, of course, right. as I mentioned, we're not there yet. But the polls undoubtedly show a huge tightening in Biden's favor since January. And if this continues all the way to November, then Biden's got it in the bag. But of course, there's so much, there's all to play for. Anything could happen before then. All right, Sarah, always great to hear your thoughts. Sarah Baxter there in New York. Now let's uh, say hi to Deborah J. Bloom, who's a New York-based criminal and family lawyer. Hello to you, Deborah. Hi, thank you for having me on. Thank you for, for, for joining us. Look, this isn't the most serious charge facing Donald Trump. There are other charges in various places in Washington, in, uh, in Georgia, to do with stashing secret documents in, in Miami. What is the, and as far as it's possible to, to answer this question, what's the, the balance of opinion among legal, legal experts, among lawyers, among jurists about this charge here in this trial? Is it considered a serious matter or is there some sympathy for the idea that the, the prosecutors are bending over to go after Trump? Well, like anything else, if you ask a handful of attorneys, you're going to get a handful of different answers. So I think here the main question is, can the prosecution get to the felony, which is proving that the false business records were done to conceal, commit another crime. I think that the prosecution is going to have a very hard time getting to the felony here, which 
after all of these judicial resources are going into this trial that's going to last six to eight weeks, the prosecution, I think, should be ashamed of themselves if this case does not get the traction they want, that they have 500 jurors waiting to be seated today and jury selection is going to take weeks. So I do think that there is some meat in the statement that this is being done to negatively impact Trump's ability to win the election because he's going to be taken off of the campaign trail for all of this time. Right. But the the, the state laws when it comes to campaign funding and the, the law when it comes to you know, dealing with fraud, falsifying uh, business documents, they are there for a reason. If they've been if they've been transgressed, surely that makes the case for action. So absolutely. I think here there are misdemeanor charges, which is typically how somebody is charged with falsifying business records. And the New York County District Attorney's Office, since discovery and bail reform, has really not aggressively pursued a lot of misdemeanor charges the way that they used to. New York State has had a massive overhaul to how it handles prosecutions. Most defendants are released, even if they're charged with something pretty terrible. You could sit in court and hear really horrific stories, and the defendant, the accused, is out without any bail. So more, it's more of a question, because look, we know that there are some funny things that happened here, the general ledger entries, the checks, the way that he signed them. I think that the prosecution likely can be able to prove a misdemeanor because fake names, fake mm -hmm. settlement agreements, fake invoices, but that all goes to the misdemeanor. It's a question of can they prove that this was done to commit another crime? Right. And you're going to have Michael Cohen, who's a convicted felon himself, who has, one could argue he has his own motives, come in, he's a main witness against Trump, and he used to be his right-hand man, and now he is getting himself more and more famous because he is testifying against former President right. Trump. And that will no doubt be a key part of the of the defense case. Just just to help me with this with this finally, the judge in the case warned Donald Trump to be careful, to hold his tongue, not to go speaking uh, against uh, those involved in the in the case, the, 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 the judge, witnesses, whoever it was. And Donald Trump has been doing exactly that, hasn't he? Including today, claiming the entire uh, court trial process is a political stitch up. Isn't that just an incitement to be found in contempt by the judge? So the judge could find him in contempt. I don't believe that Judge Merchan has made a decision on that. I think that Judge Merchan's past decisions in anything involving Trump has shown that he's not favorable to Trump. I know that earlier def the defense legal team made an attempt to ask Merchan to be removed from the bench to for the case to proceed in front of another judge. That was denied. So I, I think that it's totally possible that Trump could be held in contempt for violating the court's gag order. I think that jury selection here is going to be fascinating. It's likely to start today. Uh, the jurors are going to be asked 40 plus questions and actually seating jurors is going to be really difficult. You're looking for somebody if you're part of the defense that's pro Trump. But I think that the prosecution is going to be able to get a lot of those people off in their challenges that they're allowed to make for non discriminatory reasons. And then you're you're just going to have to the defense is going to want to find somebody who's like my father, somebody who, regardless of the fact of who the person is, is going to keep an open mind yeah. and hold the prosecution to whether the, they prove each and every element of the charged offenses yes. beyond a reasonable doubt. Yeah, and that's a long process. We do not have anything of that kind, really, in this country at all. We will be watching Deborah J. Bloom, New York attorney. Thank you.